Hello, today's topic is data compression. We're going to be talking about what it is and why it is the engine that makes streaming video like the one you're watching now possible. Data compression is just recording data in any way so that it requires fewer bytes of storage space. So if you've seen my video here, you might remember that creating a video like this in 4K, if it's uncompressed, can take terabytes of space if, say, it's an hour long and runs at 30 frames per second. Streaming video at those mammoth sizes is not something that the internet can handle. There is no way that I would be able to bring you this video in 4K or honestly any other decent resolution at all that you would, you know, not look at and think 1980s uh, if it wasn't for uh, compression. So we need to understand a little bit about how it works and there's two major ways that we can do this. We can do it what's called lossless compression or lossy compression. Lossless compression just means that we are going to cause that data reduction in some way that we can completely reverse. There is nothing that we are doing that in any way degrades the data or changes the quality of it. Now remember that in the uh, essence of taking the analog world and saving into the digital one, we inherently lose something because we have to pick and choose how much data we are going to retain about that analog uh, thing in the world that we are capturing in a discrete digital manner. What we're talking about here has nothing to do with the analog to digital conversion though. We're saying once we have the data, we don't want to lose anything more. That is lossless compression. Everything we do is reversible. Lossy compression is the opposite. Lossy compression, we say, you know what, there are some parts of the data that we have here that we really don't need. We're going to make smart, logical trade-offs on what data we can just literally throw away uh, in the hopes that we will end up with a smaller file and not degrade the experience very much. Now, it's important to note here that while I kind of talk a lot about video, this is a goes along with any type of data. You can apply data compression to sound, images, video, even text. Now, interestingly, you have to be smart about which methods you choose. For example, if I have my resume and I use compression, say, like a zip file to make it smaller so that it can transport it to you over an email, because I have a really large resume, who knows, lots of images, um, I don't wanna use lossy compression, right? Because any zip file, uh, guarantees me that when I unzip it, I'm going to get everything back exactly how I had it before I put it in that zip file. But lossy compression says, eh, no, I'm going to throw stuff away whenever I think it will help me make it smaller. So you can't use both of these techniques all of the time. Starting with lossless compression, what we're doing here is looking for ways to eliminate redundancies in the data. We can do this by straight up looking for straight redundancies like here or we can look for different patterns. Let's start with just looking at a redundancy. We can imagine that this string of data here represents a music file. And what we're looking at are actually uh, two hexadecimal characters for each byte of data. So 00, zero represents eight bits or one byte of data. And it is not uncommon for a music file to start out with just you know empty, space for a little bit. Maybe there's a pause. Um, many tracks start this way. So it's easy to imagine that our music file has some amount of that right at the beginning. Now remember that you know when you're recording audio, if you're sampling at a WAV file uh, sampling rate, you're sampling at 44,000 uh, samples per second. So that means that if we had, you know, two seconds even of silence at the beginning of the song, that would be 88,000 samples that would be exactly the same. Maybe there's an opportunity there for us to shrink that down. There's also going to be a lot of patterns, especially in music, right? Think about all the melodies that you hear, right? certain notes that always follow each other, a riff, a chorus, whatever, all of these things are repeating patterns and there will be some variances and that's okay, but a lot of times there will be a lot of overlap and a lot of opportunities to call out repeating patterns that we can then use to make this file smaller. 
Here we've identified a lot of the straight up just repeating sounds. Now, again, we had that silence in the beginning, but we can also imagine that a lot of musical notes will be held for some amount of time. Even if I'm holding a note with my voice, um, there's going to be a lot of repeating frequencies that are going to be sampled time after time after time. So this is pretty straightforward and easy to detect. Another pattern we can look for are the repeats that are actually repeats of patterns. So this could symbolize a melody of the chorus or notes that follow one another. And we can see here that we have three patterns of this 636485, and we have three patterns of this 83858687888. And notice that not only are we do we have a repeating pattern here, but then the pattern itself happens three times in a row. So that's going to be a special case that we can look at. And we also have yet another repeating pattern here with the 6F2A6F. All of these things can be used to, to bring the sample size down to a much smaller data file. So we're going to take this original file and we're going to shrink it down so it looks like this. Down here at the bottom we have our actual compressed file. If we take a look at that first string of zeros we had, there was actually 12 of them. If we pick any hexadecimal character that, say, was not used at the beginning of a note, let's say F, let's say that if we look back through our, our actual file here, no note starts with an F. Okay, so, you know, how we decide to do this is actually up to the compression algorithm. We're just kind of using our own imaginary compression algorithm here, but this is a completely valid way to think about it. So if I didn't use an F in the actual uh, song, then I can use that in my legend that's going to be part of how I know how to decode this thing later. So I'm going to say that I'm going to have an F and then I'm going to have the number that represents how many times the thing repeated. Now this repeated 12 times and we know that 12 in hexadecimal is a B. So if I say FB, I'm saying that there was a repeat, it happened 12 times, and then I can follow it up with what was repeated 12 times. So I've taken these 12 bytes here and I've compressed them down into two. Where I have here is my legend for the fact that I'm noting that I'm repeating uh, something 12 times and what I'm repeating 12 times is 00. zero. Then I can also take patterns like these, where they repeat the whole pattern, and I can again assign them characters that were not used. So in this case, I'm going to say everything that starts with a C, because I didn't have uh, C0, C1, or C2, I'm going to use those as a legend to denote these particular patterns. I'm just going to replace these with C0, uh, this one with C1, and this one with C2. So everywhere they were, in the original song, I'm just going to replace them with these here. And you can see our result here. We have our FB00 for our initial zero strings, and then we have our C0 here for the, the pattern that was here. Uh, strewn in here, we also have a couple of other FFs. So you can see here, this one was actually a really long repeat of 65. In fact, it was so long that I needed to actually show it twice because I filled up in my little algorithm, I only allowed for the repeating character to handle a total of a range of 16 because I only gave it one hexadecimal character to note how many times it repeated. So I actually had to take 65s and denote it twice. I had to have FF for, uh, for the first 15 here and then the 65 and then F4 uh, for the second. After that we have some more repeating patterns here uh, and we have our F4, C2, and we have our C0, C1, C0, C1. And you can see that we took this, what was a, a relatively much larger file, and we've condensed it down quite a bit. In fact, if we look at it side by side, you can see that we achieved in our imaginary example here, with just lossless compression, we didn't lose anything, we can use our little algorithm to bring it right back, we obtained a 3x compression ratio. We went from, we actually achieved greater than that, we went from 99 bytes at the top to 30 at the bottom. Now that we know how loss List compression works. Let's look at lossy compression. Remember, lossy compression means that we don't mind throwing something away. 
but we have to be smart about this and there's a lot of science behind how this works. So if we stay with our music analogy for right now an example, we can talk about what's called psychoacoustic lossy compression. The idea behind this is that the human ear can only hear certain sounds. You're probably aware that some of your pets may hear frequencies that you don't. Um, our hearing can be considered a little bit limited depending on you know what you're comparing it against uh, across other animals in, in the animal kingdom. But all that aside, the reality is, is that humans cannot generally hear anything outside the range of 20 hertz to 20,000 hertz. And that is our hearing range. So if we record anything that is in frequencies outside of that range, there's no reason to have it. We can just throw that away. That is information that isn't making our music sound any better, and therefore it's just taking up space. There's also differences in how quickly our ears can pick up differences in sound. Now, this is not my field of study, so I'm not going to go crazy deep into this. If you want to know more, you can kind of look this up on your own. Um, but what's important to know here is this is basically a science that looks at how people can hear and what the limits of not only our ears are, but of our mind to interpret the signal. And it can basically find the stuff that we're not going to pick up on and we're not going to hear. And it can remove those things from the song. This can compress audio easily, usually around 10 to 1, uh, without actually losing any quality. So now we get to use this uh, in conjunction with our lossless uh, techniques that we just discussed. And now you start to see how we can take, say, a 70 megabit WAV file and make it into a 3 or 4 megabit MP3 file. Remember that an MP3 file uses both lossless and lossy compression techniques in order to achieve a much smaller file. Another way we can explore this is what's called psychovisual lossy compression. So if we think about image files, the same theory that we just applied to how we hear also applies to how we see. So we cannot see the, the full gamut of, of the world around us, right? There are just things that our eyes are not capable of seeing. Again, there are limits on the visual light spectrum that we are capable of perceiving. There's also a lot of limits on how we uh, see in our peripheral vision versus, you know, in the center of our vision where we're focused on. So there's actually a lot of science behind that. When they're looking at an image, they can, you know, usually predict what part of the image you'll be looking at and perhaps other areas that are like peripheral, um, there might be a different level of how much they have to pay to attention to motion in those areas, but detail, um, you know, may be able to be left out. Now, again, this is not my scientific area of expertise, so I'm going to kind of refer you to look more up here if you're interested in learning more. But suffice it to say, there are lots that can be removed uh, and basically trick our, our human eyes, which are a little bit imperfect. In fact, you know, it's interesting, there's uh, the back of your retina, um, a little bit off center, where the optic nerve connects, there's no rods or cones to actually receive light. So there's actually a black hole, so to speak, in the middle of your vision. Again, this is something that, you know, it's not my area of expertise, but it's, it's interesting to bring up because your brain reconstructs the image that, you know, is in that void and your brain is doing that. So your brain will very often fill in the gaps for the image so they can, you know, compress things out and your brain will fix it and you don't even know that it's doing it. And that's kind of the marvel of how these things work. There's also obviously a lot of opportunity if we can identify the parts in uh, a video that change uh, versus the ones that don't, right? Because if we're, say, looking at a scene where there's like the grass and the road and there's a car driving on the road, you know, the car is moving, but maybe the rest of the frame is still and the trees and the road and, and the grass, they're not moving. So we don't need to repeat all of that data in every frame. Maybe we can reuse it from previous frames and just move the car, right? So using all of these wonderful techniques, we can typically get 
uh, to a compression ratio factor between 20 and 200 times. Now, this is imperative because if you remember before, I said that it is very easy for an hour of 4K video to get up beyond 2 terabytes uh, easily. That, that's not even hard to do. If it's completely uncompressed, you would be looking at 2 terabytes or more uh, for an hour of 30 frames per second at 4K. That is absolutely not sustainable, and it's not something that you know our internet connections could handle. I hope you enjoyed this quick introduction. If you want to learn more, please check out these references that I've included. I've also included them down in the description below, uh, so you can kind of continue on from this point. And thank you for watching. Uh, if you haven't seen my channel before, please check it out. I'm trying to create a repository of computer science knowledge and also just help people do everything from learn to code to learn the, the computer science fundamentals better and have a, a great forum to come back to anytime that they want. Please do like and subscribe. We appreciate it and have a great day.